major and minor triad arcs show all the notes on the fretboard for a range of 12 frets for a major or minor arpeggio, major or minor chord tones. They occur, as you can see in the diagram on the upper left here, in a shape with one note on each of the six strings that could be embraced by an arc, like this drawn alongside. This is the E form arc for major. These notes of a G major bar chord and this additional note on the sixth string, which I'm strumming with my plucking hand thumb. This C form arc for G at the seventh position, like barring the seventh fret and making a C form chord as if you were in first position, and adding this note on the sixth string, which I could again fret with my right hand strum with my thumb or I can strum I can fret that with my little finger fretting the fifth and sixth string bow. Then the third and last arc is a A G form. It's these notes of an A form G chord at the tenth fret and adding these two the sixth string fifteenth fret G and the uh, 5th string, 14th fret, B. I'm fretting this with my right hand, index and middle, and then again strumming with my thumb. Each of these you could play to conceive them as an arpeggio, uh, one note at a time, but fretting them as a chord helps instill in your mind the pattern. Then play three consecutive strings of each one of these, making four sets. This E form one has strings 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 5, 4, 3, or 6, 5, 4. And the C form one, one two, strings 3, 2, 1, 4, two, four 3, 2, 5, 4, 3, 6, 5, 4. And the... Um, a G form one on three two one four two three six five four three or six five four. Then with these you can make various structures based on the triad with a set of rules usually. For instance, here's a pedal point thirds pattern. This makes the chords G, C, G seventh note third. And that's on the first three strings. On the strings four, three, two, it would be. Five, four, three, it's G, C, G seven note third, C, G. And on string six, five, four, G, C, G7 note third, G, G, C, G7 note third, C, G, and then in the C form, strings 3, 2, 1, G, C, G7, C, G, or G, C, G7 note third, C, G7 to 3rd, C, and in the A, G form, G, C, G7 to 3rd, C, G, C, G7 to 3rd, C, and G, C, G7 to 3rd, C, G, and on string 6, 5, 4, G, C, G7 to 3rd, C. And using these and improvising, by the way, they don't have to be in that order. They can be in reverse order.
in another structure with these, which would incorporate all of them, usually playing horizontally on the fretboard, is a... Um, chromatic diminished dominant. We play a major chord. Here's the top of the G. This one up 12 frets. Top of the G. And I'm taking the one of this. You have to figure out where the one is. I'm in E form here. So here's 3, 5, 1. Take the one and change it to flat 7. That's down two frets. So the G major and then Changing that to flat seven, it's G seventh note third, or it makes B diminished, and take that down a fret to B flat diminished and A diminished, and then go to the next G chord. Well, in this area, the G chord tones are here, which you'd know from the study of the arts. G chord tones are here, and that would be on those strings, these notes. So that gives you G, G seventh note third, which is B diminished. B flat diminished, A diminished, then G. Then follow the same rules again. Change the 1 to flat 7. 1's here. Now make it flat 7. And that's um, B diminished, B flat diminished, A diminished, and then G here. Change the 1 to flat 7. And you have B diminished, which is G7, no third. Uh, synonym, an alternate name. B e diminished, B e flat diminished, A e diminished, G. And then you're back where you started if you notice this down an octave. And then you could do this again, except we just ran out of frets. Then you could do that same thing on strings 4, 3, 2. That's the, in the E form. Change the 1 to flat 7. I have the B diminished, B e flat diminished, A e diminished. Nearest chord tones of the G is this in the A form. Then change the 1 to flat 7 with the B diminished. Descend it twice chromatically. Go to the nearest tones of G, which would now be in a C form. Find the 1. Here's the 1. Change it to flat 7, down 2 frets. That gives me B diminished. Take it down chromatically twice. B diminished, B flat diminished, A diminished. Find the nearest G chord tones, and that's G here. Uh, then here, this is almost out of view. This is G on strings uh, 5, 4, 3 in the 16th position. That's G, attain the 1, 2, flat 7. And that's B diminished, B flat diminished, A diminished. Then the nearest tones of a G would be part of this G form. Change the 1 to flat 7, then you get this spread voicing. B diminished, B flat diminished, A diminished. Go to the nearest tones of G, that'll be all the way down here. Change the 1 to flat 7. I'll take it down. B diminished, B flat diminished, um, A diminished, and then the nearest tones of G would be here. 12 frets from where we started, 12 frets below where we started. Then the last one, G way up here, uh, when I get down here I'll continue that so it, if, if you're on an acoustic and you can't reach up here at the end you'll have the same thing down 12 frets. So here's G at the 17th position. The one is on the fourth string, so change it to flat seven. And that's B diminished, B flat diminished, A diminished, and then G. The nearest one is in this G form. Change the one to flat seven. And that's B diminished, descend chromatically, B flat diminished, A diminished, and then the nearest G would be this shaped like an open position E chord went up here at the ninth fret on the three bass strings. Then change the one to flat seven. Here's the one. And you have B diminished, B flat diminished, A diminished, nearest tons of G chord, this G. Now we're 12 frets from where we started here. Change the one to flat seven. B diminished. B 
flat diminished, and A diminished, and the final one would be G with an open string here. And these could be used uh, blues or rock styles that have a blues influence usually, but this progression originated in ragtime, so it's kind of old style blues. these different things like uh, I just did the descending diminished and then went right into the uh, G C G seventh which I call one four C is the four chord in the key of G one seven the G seventh chord with no third so it's one four one seven voice like this So this should all be very useful for you, and you can take little bits of all these different kinds of voicings and mix them in as filler between phrases, or the main part of a uh, accompaniment, main part of a uh, improvisation.